Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a blind buy fragrance haul. A couple of these were sent to me complimentary, the rest I purchased myself, but I have not so much as sampled any of these fragrances, and most of them are new launches for 2022. And if there's one thing I will never get sick of when it comes to fragrance, it's trying a brand new fragrance for the first time that's hot to the market. So today I'm going to unbox all of these with you and share my first impressions. I have to begin with this first discovery set. This I purchased myself and it just arrived yesterday and I am so excited because I have been searching for these fragrances everywhere. This is the Small Wonder set from Estee Lauder. It's the new elevated fragrance line from Estee Lauder. I have not been able to find these anywhere at any of my local department stores. In fact, when I go in store and I ask around and ask different sales associates if they're available, nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I don't think people even realize that these are available. I've seen them online everywhere, but that certainly doesn't help me out. And I believe the full size retails for about $200. So they're pricey. I certainly did not intend to purchase any of these fragrances without trying them first, but I figured the discovery set would be the best way. I just could not wait any longer. And these did launch, I believe earlier this year. So it's a new 2022 launch. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about them, but several of these fragrances sound really nice. And then I read a couple reviews where people said, oh, I expected to love this one the most, but then it turns out I liked this one the most. And that sold it for me. I knew I needed to go ahead and just pick up the discovery set. I believe this retails for about $90. So more than I wanted to spend for just a discovery kit. They didn't have the little tiny vials. So these are a little bit larger. Ooh. Oh, it's beautiful. So inside it comes with eight little samples. You get Tender Light, Sensuous Stars, Dream Dusk, which I believe is one of the best sellers, Radiant Mirage, Desert Eden, Blushing Sands, that's another one I had my eye on, Paradise Moon, and Infinite Sky. I always see Dream Dusk and Blushing Sands, so I want to say those are going to be the most popular, but who knows, maybe there's a dark horse in here. I might end up liking one of the others better. And then down here at the end... What is this? <laughs> I'm not sure what it is yet. It's either little cards to smell them or maybe little... Oh yeah, they're little descriptions. How cute. My curiosity has been killing me, so I have to start with Dream Dusk. This is one of the fragrances that I almost purchased without trying. It says, enter a secret garden where flurries of petals lead you from day into night. Floral marine, cherry blossom, black currant buds, and geranium. Oh, so it sounds really nice cherry blossom. You know, I've been on a cherry blossom kick. Okay, let's see. I also like that they come in little sprays, which is nice versus roller balls, which I feel like you can never really get the fragrance out. Oh, it's potent. It's already filling the room. Mm, it's very pretty. This reminds me of one of the Louis Vuitton fragrances. Not this latest one, City of Stars. I tried that in store. It wasn't for me, it was too citrusy. Oh shoot, what's it called? Drive you crazy, center of attention, something like that. Spell on you, <laughs> that's what it is. It reminds me a little bit of Louis Vuitton Spell on You. Not exactly, but kind of similar at first. That one dries down to be very clean and a little bit soapy. It's my favorite out of all of the Louis Vuitton fragrances. This is a little smoother and there's something a bit creamy about it. I can't wait to wear this so I can let it dry down on my skin, but this is definitely an interesting fragrance. Next, I'm gonna try Blushing Sands. This is another one of the fragrances that I've seen everywhere. As soon as I search for new fragrances, this one comes up. The description says, let your senses lead you in a dream journey across rose-tinted sands. Woody Vetiver. Keynotes include Vetiver from Haiti, Pink Pepper, and Immortal Musk Accord. It's not for me. It's a little bit too green. It's a very green, earthy, a little woody. 
definitely more unisex, a bit masculine. Not a bad fragrance though. I mean, I think it smells really nice, but not like something that I would personally wear. This is Desert Eden. It says, imagine the moment when the sun's rays spread over the desert at dawn. Woody floral. It has sandalwood, rose ultimate, and olibanum. I love discovery sets because it kind of feels like you're opening up an assorted candy box and you just get to try a little bit of everything. It's kind of a surprise. So let's try Desert Eden. Oh, now this is really good. Oh, so unexpected from Estee Lauder. This smells dreamy and powerful. It's spicy, a little incense and rose. Reminds me of something. I cannot put my finger on it just yet, but this smells like a very expensive luxury niche fragrance. Kind of reminds me of something from Fragrance de Bois or Zerzhoff kind of delicious. Very fall winter, not something that I think I would get a lot of wear out of right now, but wow. And so far, all of these fragrances have been bold, very powerful. Next, I'm going to try Radiant Mirage. It says, follow a timeless road to a new realm of the senses just beyond reach, white floral woody. Keynotes include jasmine sandback, sandalwood, and patchouli. This could be promising. I'm at a loss. One of the most interesting fragrances, it almost has like a cool, crisp, woody feel to it, but there's a little sweetness and I think it's maybe the jasmine. It's kind of like a very cool, almost minty floral. It's so refreshing. I think I love this one. This is another one that's been on my radar, Infinite Sky. It says, rise up into a brilliant sunset sky, thrilling your senses with rare beauty. It's an amber spicy fragrance with keynotes of Sichuan pepper, vanille, and leatherwood. I like the sound of this one. Let's see. Oh, yes. Ooh, spicy, a little vanilla. This is changing constants from Penhaligans. It's a little bit changing Constance, Minuit et Demi, if you're familiar with those fragrances. This would be in that family. They smell very similar. Except this doesn't have so much amber. It doesn't really have the coffee note that Minuit et Demi has. It doesn't have the sweet praline from changing Constance. So it's still different, but I would say if you like those fragrances, you would probably really like this. This could be a new favorite. I like almost anything that's heavy vanilla or very vanilla forward, vanilla centric. So I like everything else that's kind of dancing around, but the one main note that really stands out to me is the vanilla. Next, I'm going to try Paradise Moon. Keynotes include Osmanthus, Cystus Oil Concrete, and Leather Accord. This doesn't sound like the type of fragrance I would typically love, but I am willing to be surprised. So let's see, just more masculine notes. You know, it's actually more citrusy. It's like a citrus leather, which is a very strange combination. I'm not sure they really work that well together. It just sort of, it feels a little bit fragmented. Like I get a lot of citrus and then I get the leather, but they haven't quite blended together in my nose. Now this sounds like more my style. This is Sensuous Stars. Keynotes include Chinese plum, lavender, and orris. The description says, enjoy the sensual tranquility of a walk under a moonlit sky. Hmm. I smell like a sweet, sour, sweet, sour, tart, cherry note. It's kind of reminding me of a cherry candy from childhood. I'm not quite sure what, but I feel like I've tasted this before. It, it's very strange. It's like a bitter cherry. Usually when you get 
those fruity notes, especially right away. It's paired with sweetness and some floral notes, but that's kind of missing here. It's a little bit more fresh, clean, a little bit green even. This one I like, but I feel like I need to smell this with a fresh nose because I've smelled so many fragrances and they're all so bold and so completely different from one another. I think I like it, but I'm still not sure. The eighth and final fragrance from our discovery set is Tender Light. It says, feel the joy and warmth of sunlight and be lifted to a palace of dreams. It's a citrus green fragrance. Keynotes include Chinese tea accord, bergamot, and Florentine iris. Here we go. Sounds like something that would be nice for spring, summer. Ooh. Mmm. It's a very juicy, citrusy fragrance. I like it. It's got a little bit of that bubblegum type of smell. Almost like Reckless from Roja. But it doesn't have that syrupy candy sweetness, which I think a lot of people will actually love. Ooh, this could be my favorite. And if I were to just read the descriptions of all of these fragrances, I probably would not have guessed that Tender Light would be a contender. Oh, but it's so pretty. It's kind of got a smooth, creamy, floral feel to it with citrus. But like a sweet citrus, not a lemony fresh. This is nice. This is really nice. This I want to try on my skin. And it smells very elegant, sophisticated. It smells very feminine. I would say this is the most feminine, kind of dainty smelling fragrance of the entire set. And that is, I would say, my perfume style in general. I didn't want to lose track, so I've been separating them. And my five favorites from the set are Sensuous Stars, Radiant Mirage, Infinite Sky, Desert Eden, and Tender Light. So five out of eight is pretty good. Now these are fragrances that I love so much I can't wait to try them on my skin. The other, others aren't necessarily bad. They're just fragrances that upon first impression I can't really see myself wearing them. I am so impressed with this set. Well worth the money. I'm so glad I invested in this versus one full-size bottle because maybe I would have chosen the wrong one. But this way you kind of get to try them all. I think the sizes of each sample are pretty decent. I mean, you could wear this for several weeks and that way you know with 100% certainty that you do plan to invest in the full size bottle or maybe you wanna layer them and come up with your own combination or maybe you just enjoy them while you have them and then as soon as you run out, you're done, you move on to something else. You don't have to commit to the full size if you don't want to. I love them. Not what I expected at all from Estee Lauder. I think they've done an incredible job with this new fragrance launch. Now they just need to do a better job marketing. They need to get the word out and let people know that these fragrances ex exist. And hopefully they will start popping up in stores so that people can smell them. The next fragrance I want to try was sent to me complimentary from Mise and Cire. This is their latest launch. It's called Amber Magique Eau de Parfum. I'm so grateful for them sending this over and I read the notes and it sounds incredible. It sounds like the type of fragrance that I would love. Maybe not very spring summer, but something worth holding on to for fall winter. It's categorized as an amber floral fragrance with keynotes of orange blossom, mandarin rose, cardamom, Bulgarian rose, ambergris, and bourbon vanilla. I really love this white and gold bottle. This looks so luxurious versus just the clear glass, which is also very pretty. This doesn't show fingerprints quite as much, I don't think. I just love this combination, the white and gold. Okay, let's see. Ooh, it is so smooth. Wow, this is very different than what I expected. Based on the key notes, 
it just smells completely different. Like I'm not really picking up on the orange blossom or the mandarin at all. I don't even get a lot of amber right away or vanilla. Now I'm starting to get the vanilla. It's kind of peeking its head through. It's kind of hard to describe what I'm smelling because there's really not one particular note that's standing out. It's just kind of a blend of a multitude of things. But overall, I would say it's a little bit powdery. Maybe a bit woody. It's definitely not sweet. And it is certainly a unisex fragrance. Not my favorite fragrance from Beezins here. I don't have that immediate, wow, oh my goodness, this is for me. That's the reaction that I had with For Your Love and Trey Share, where I just knew. Like, yes, I want to douse myself with this fragrance. This could be a slow burner. I don't know. My nose is a bit overwhelmed at the moment. It's not bad. And the more it dries down, I'm starting to get a very light, sort of powdery vanilla. I just, I wish there was a stronger amber note coming through. And amber is one of those notes that generally is so overpowering. It's kind of funny that it's not there at the moment. This is one that I will have to wear on my skin to truly appreciate. This next fragrance was also sent to me complimentary. This is the latest launch from Acro. It's called Ink. Based on the description and even just the name and the packaging, it sounds like even though this is technically a unisex fragrance, sounds like it's going to be a bit more masculine, so maybe something I could give to my husband. But I'm still sort of curious, and I don't have any other fragrances from Acro. So if you have any recommendations from this brand, anything that I have to try, please let me know. I'm very curious to explore more now. But I'm always excited to try the new fragrances of the year. As you know, I keep a running list on my phone of the best and worst fragrance launches of each year. So I always love to expand my list and try everything that's new. Don't necessarily have to buy it and add it to my collection, but I at least want to get my nose on it. So this packaging immediately is very cool. I like this tin. It's kind of giftable, something you could hold on, hold on to. Store little knickknacks in there. And then this is the bottle. The description says, everyone remembers their first tattoo, the fear, the sensation, the adrenaline rush, the futile attempts to hide it from your parents. Keynotes include vetiver, black ink, jasmine, and birch. I know this probably makes me a very lame person, but I do not have any tattoos. <laughs> I've never even really contemplated getting a tattoo. I never went through a really rebellious phase where I thought, ooh, I'm going to go out and get a tattoo and show my parents that I'm an adult and I can do what I want. I just, I've never been that type of person. And I don't think I've ever felt committed enough to a design. There's nothing that I thought, oh yes, that is what I want on my body for the rest of my life. So I'm just too indecisive to even get a tattoo. I'm very curious to smell the black ink note in this perfume. I don't know if I've ever smelled that before. I think it's a really cool idea. You know what? Wow. It does smell like ink. Ooh, it smells good. Not for me, because I like princess perfumes, but it's nice for men. For anybody. Anybody who wants to wear the fragrance, but I would say if I'm trying to describe it to somebody who's not smelling the same thing, you're not sitting in this room with me, I would describe it as a bit more masculine. And it kind of smells like woody, a little ink, it kind of smells like pens and pencils from school. So it does have a bit of like a nostalgic factor, but not from my first tattoo. It's just kind of bringing me back to childhood, to sitting in a classroom, you know, but it is so nice. It's a very pleasant woody fragrance. Mmm, I really like it. Not something that I would wear. It's not for me, but I will definitely gift this to my husband, and I hope he loves it as much as I do. He probably will. It smells like the kind of fragrance he would wear because it's a little bit smooth, kind of cool, like the cool guy. 
I could see a very well-dressed man wearing this fragrance. It's kind of an elegant, sophisticated fragrance. Something you just kind of spritz on every day before you head out to work. Maybe not an evening date night type of fragrance, but just kind of like a cool but casual, you know, not trying too hard, but I smell really good. This just arrived today in the mail. The box got a little bit squished on its way here. This was sent to me from Floral Street, and I know this is not a new fragrance, but it's a new set. And I'm just kind of racking my brain because I feel like I might have tried this fragrance at some point, but I definitely do not remember it. It's the Wonderland Peony. I recognize it, but Floral Street is not a brand that is carried, I don't think, at any of my local Sephora, so it's very difficult to try them. I really only smell the few bottles they've sent to me. So this is the brand new set. I believe I already spotted this available on Sephora.com. It says Wonderland Peony Eau de Parfum gift set. A light fruity floral fragrance for the delicate, dreamy, radiant, and thoughtful. We don't like to play favorites, but we have a thing for peonies and this fragrance is stuffed full of them. The set includes two Eau de Parfums that you can gift to someone special or keep for yourself. So inside you get a little 1.7 fluid ounce or a 50 ml bottle and then a little 10 ml for travel. It's a nice touch that they are both individually wrapped in their original packaging. That way you truly could give one of them away as a gift if you wanted to. You can keep the travel spray for yourself. Maybe give the full size to your mom since Mother's Day is around the corner. I'm going to go ahead and just spray the travel spray instead of opening up the full size. And I like the sound of it. pretty. It's a sweet floral. Mmm, it's very nice. It almost has a candy sweetness right away. And maybe a citrus note in there. It's a little citrusy, a little sweet, but then very floral. I like it. I think it's a nice, playful springtime fragrance. There are so many overpowering woody notes in my nose right now that it's pretty difficult to judge. But I think I really like it. I think it's just one of those nice, pleasant floral fragrances that you don't have to think too much about. You can kind of just spray it whenever. And then the very last fragrance I have to unbox for the day is the new launch from House of Siage. This was sent to me complimentary and it's been a while since I've received any PR from them. A long time ago, it felt like I was receiving packages every single week, but this is the new Ruby Rain limited edition fragrance and I just really like the sound of the notes, so we're gonna test it out. It says bergamot, rose, saffron, tonka bean, and oud. It's the new sister fragrance to the beloved Emerald Rain fragrance. It's supposed to be fierce and powerful. House of Siage is certainly known for their very elaborate, intricate packaging. This box is gorgeous. Then we open it up and it's packaged beautifully and it has a lion head on top with little rubies for eyes. It looks like something from Aladdin. <laughs> I feel like if I rub it a couple times maybe a genie will come out. Wow! It's gorgeous with the lion's head and then the crystals all the way around. Oh my goodness. It's so over the top, so luxurious and opulent. It's a statement piece, that's for sure. Now does the fragrance inside live up to the beautiful bottle? Let's see. Okay, this is the new Ruby Rain. It reminds me actually of one of the Estee Lauder fragrances. I definitely pick up on the oud and the rose. I don't know if this is a love at first sniff for me. It doesn't smell like something I would wear, but I can't really quite put my finger on it. I don't really get the tonka bean. I think I wish it was maybe a little bit sweeter or maybe had a little bit of vanilla. I could see some people really loving this, especially if you love beast mode, powerful oud fragrances. It's just not my personal preference but it is pretty.
That's all I have to share for today's video. I don't think it would have been possible to accurately try any other fragrances because there are just too many competing smells going on in this room at this point. I've definitely hit the wall. I am nose blind. Everything is smelling the same for me. The only other fragrance that has been on my radar that I almost ordered for this video but then I kind of held myself back and forced myself to take a breath is Vini Antique, the brand new Byredo launch. It sounds, based on the notes, like it would be really beautiful and who knows, it could be my very first Byredo purchase. But I have a feeling it will be easy to find in the next few weeks. It's available online right now, but it will roll out to counters and then I can't wait to get my nose on that fragrance. If there are any other new launches that you're interested in, let me know down below so I can seek them out as well. But that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts on these new fragrances. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.